This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Over the past 30 years, Sauber have been a constant presence on the Formula 1 grid. They've gone through numerous changes of branding and identity, but have always been a mainstay of the midfield. They rarely put themselves in the spotlight, but were they to leave, their presence would be missed, and they have been a key stepping stone for many drivers in their ascent to the big leagues. Along with this, they've often found themselves in the courtroom and had relatively little patience with their drivers. Time for a summary of their driver transfer history. But first, for any Formula 1 team, choosing their drivers can be a dirty business. But for you, choosing your VPN provider doesn't have to be, thanks to today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a virtual private network provider which allows you to connect to over 3,200 servers in 100 countries across the world, so your connection is always fast and secure. No matter where I am in the world, with the click of a button I can access region-locked content and it will also block any dodgy websites or malicious links. Both the latest series of Drive to Survive and the new Formula 1 season are just around the corner and you can use Surfshark to access Netflix and F1 TV no matter where you are. My videos, as you know, require a lot of research and data gathering, and Surfshark means I can browse in safety and get access to any region-locked content I need. As well as hiding your IP address and allowing you to transfer files securely, you can also use Surfshark Alert to monitor security breaches of your personal data, Surfshark Antivirus to protect you against any dodgy websites or downloads you come across, and Surfshark Search to allow you to take your browser history to the grave. Surfshark is available on an unlimited number of devices and browsers, and you can have all of this risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Head to surfshark.deals forward slash peterbrook, which is pinned in the comments and the description, and enter the coupon code peterbrook to get access to an 83% discount off your Surfshark plan, plus 3 months extra for free. That's surfshark.deals forward slash peterbrook. Start protecting your online data today with Surfshark. Now, back to the video. Peter Sauber began his motorsport career in his native Switzerland in the late 1960s by competing in hill climb events, and in 1970 founded Sauber Motorsport and began building his own cars. Shortly after, he hung up his helmet but gained recognition building sports cars, and in 1985 formed a partnership with Mercedes-Benz, with Sauber gaining factory team status. The Sauber C9 was built in 1987, and with this car the team took a 1-2 finish in the 1989 24 Hours of Le Mans, with four of their six drivers being former Formula 1 drivers Jochen Maas, Mauro Baldi, Kenny Aitchison and Gianfranco Brancatelli. For the 1990 World Sports Car Championship season, they employed former Formula 1 drivers Jean-Louis Schlesser, Mauro Baldi and Jochen Maas, and joining Maas in the number 2 chassis came 21-year-old Michael Schumacher, 21-year-old Karl Wendlinger and 22-year-old Heinz Harald Frentzen. Schumacher and Wendlinger stayed on in 1991, and at this point Sauber made a motion to create a Formula 1 team. Harvey Postlethwaite joined the team as technical director, and Mercedes-Benz funded the construction of a new factory in Hinville, 20 miles southeast of Zurich. Despite Mercedes-Benz's enthusiasm and the success the two parties had enjoyed, they elected not to be directly involved, and so Sauber built their first Formula 1 car, the C12, in time for 1993, which was powered by an Ilmor V10 engine built in partnership with Mercedes-Benz, but rebadged as a Sauber, and so stickers saying concept by Mercedes-Benz appeared on the engine cover. For drivers, their first choice was 33-year-old Gerhard Berger, but he instead chose Ferrari, and instead they rehired Karl Wendlinger, who had spent the past two seasons in Formula 1 with Leighton House and March, and gave the second seat to 27-year-old JJ Leto, who had past experience with Onyx and BMS Scuderia Italia. Things began relatively strongly, particularly for a brand new team, as they scored points on their debut and quickly established themselves in the upper midfield, but after Wendlinger and Leto collided in Monaco, the team blamed Leto, who fell out of fashion with the team and scored no further points that year. In 1994, Mercedes-Benz made a formal return to Formula 1 after first leaving in 1955, by giving the team factory backing. Wendlinger was retained, and Leto was dropped and moved to Benetton. The team went through negotiations with 39-year-old Riccardo Patrese, but he instead chose to retire, and in Leto's place they brought in another former sports car driver, Heinz Harald Frentzen. Once again, the season started strongly. However, at Monaco, Wendlinger crashed at the Nouvelle Chicane in qualifying and had his head impact the barriers which left him comatose. 
Frentzen then withdrew from the race, and at the following round the team introduced raised cockpit size for increased head protection, which would become compulsory for all teams in 1996. At the following round in Canada, 35-year-old Andre de Cesaris joined as Wendlinger's replacement, who had a vast amount of experience as over the previous 14 years he had driven for no fewer than 9 teams. Despite that, in a run of 9 races he finished just once and scored only a single point, and so for the final two rounds he was dropped and Wendlinger was set to return. However, times in testing proved he needed more time to recover, but the team were unable to contact De Cesaris and instead hastily drafted Leto back in, who had just been released by Benetton. In 1995, Sauber took on their first major branding change by striking a sponsorship deal with Austrian energy drink company Red Bull, who had purchased a 60% stake in the team, due to last for the next 10 years, and also Malaysian oil company Petronas. As well as this, they parted ways with Mercedes-Benz again who moved over to McLaren and took on Ford V8s, gaining factory team status with them. On the driver front, Frentzen was retained in the second seat, and Wendlinger, having now fully recovered from his accident, returned as first driver, although Red Bull wanted the team to sign 23-year-old Christian Fittipaldi, but Peter Sauber wanted to remain loyal to Wendlinger. They also took on 20-year-old German Formula 3 driver Norberto Fontana as test driver. Frentzen continued to drive strongly, being a mainstay of the upper midfield, but a few races in it was clear that Wendlinger had still not fully recovered, and after just four races he was dropped. Instead of giving his seat to the young and inexperienced Fontana, Williams' 25-year-old test driver Jean-Christophe Bouillon was loaned over to them, but wasn't much of a match for Frentzen, who gave the team their first podium in Italy. For the final two rounds, Bouillon was released back to Williams, and the seat was given to Wendlinger again to give him one final chance, 18 months after his accident. But again, there was little sign of improvement, and he walked away from Formula 1 at the end of the year. Frentzen stayed on for a third consecutive season in 1996, Fontana was retained as test driver, and in the first seat the team signed 31-year-old Johnny Herbert, who had just spent a year as former Sauber Mercedes driver Michael Schumacher's teammate at Benetton. He proved a much closer match for Frentzen, but the car struggled with its new Ford V10 engine, and the only real highlight the team enjoyed was a third and fourth in Monaco. Frentzen's form against Bouillon in 1995 had impressed Williams, and so early on in 1996 he signed for them for 1997, replacing future champion Damon Hill. With this, Herbert stayed on for 1997, and 32-year-old Nicola Larini was given the second seat, which was done as part of a deal with Ferrari to get access to their 1996 spec engines, which would be rebranded as Petronas. Petronas were originally going to build the engines themselves, but this came to a halt with the onset of the Asian financial crisis. Larini did not enjoy the atmosphere at Sauber, nor did he feel fully welcomed and appreciated there, and so he quit after just five races. He was promptly replaced with 29-year-old Gianni Morbidelli, who had spent the previous year as Jordan's test driver while competing in Italian touring cars and also had connections to Ferrari. However, after only two races, he broke his arm in a testing crash, and so Fontana, now on his third consecutive year as test driver, was finally given a race seat. He spun off in his first race, at which point Peter Sauber unsuccessfully tried to find a replacement. Fontana then missed the Weybridge in qualifying at Silverstone and spun again at Hockenheim, but after this, Morbidelli's arm had healed and he returned. At the penultimate round at Suzuka, Morbidelli crashed in qualifying again and broke his wrist, and so missed the race and was replaced by Fontana once again for the final round at Jerez. Here, Fontana blocked Jacques Villeneuve while being lapped and was let go once the season was over. Years later, it was discovered that in between the Italian and Austrian Grand Prix, Michael Schumacher had done a secret test in a debadged Sauber 16 at Fiorano, making a brief return after his time as one of their sports car drivers in 1991. The reasons for the tests are unknown, but it was believed to have been to get his input on the car's handling issues on low fuel runs. Herbert had got another podium in 1997 and stayed on for a third consecutive year in 1998. Alongside him came 32-year-old Jean Lacy on a two-year contract, who had just left Benetton. 28-year-old Jörg Müller also took over from Fontana as test driver. 37-year-old 1996 champion Damon Hill had been offered a seat, but instead chose Jordan, and the team tried to get Gerhard Berger again, but he instead chose to retire and recommended a Lacey for the seat. Sauber now had the most experienced driver lineup on the grid, but there wasn't much change in form, and a Lacey comprehensively outperformed Herbert, getting a single podium at Spa. 
Herbert left at the end of the year to join Stewart, and Sal was signed 28-year-old pay driver Pedro Diniz from Arrows, who was paying the team $7 million, though Arrows put up a fight and took this to the contract recognition board, who ruled in favour of Diniz. Muller also left as test driver to join the BMW Williams project. Performance slipped back even further in 1999, and there were a spate of retirements and Diniz narrowly outscored a Lacey. After Michael Schumacher broke his leg at Silverstone, Alessi was almost drafted in by his former team to replace him, and was then almost chosen to replace Eddie Irvine in the second seat full-time for 2000. By this point he was fed up with Sauber, and after a crash in Hungary said he would not be renewing his contract and was waiting for the season to end. For 2000, Alessi moved to Prost and Diniz stayed on for a second year and was joined by 33-year-old Mika Salo, who had replaced Schumacher at Ferrari the previous year. There was a small uptake in form, mostly in reliability, and the team were pleased with Salo, which is why it shocked them when he activated an exit clause in his contract at the end of the year to join the new Toyota Formula 1 project. Diniz, by contrast, failed to score any points and towards the end of the year was put in a testing shootout at Mugello against 21-year-old Enrique Binaldi, who was racing in International Formula 3000 and was backed by Red Bull. He was faster than Binaldi, and then had talks with both Sauber and Prost to get a seat for 2001, but neither of them was interested, so he instead retired from motorsport and purchased a 40% stake in Prost. With two seats vacant for 2001, Sauber first signed 23-year-old Nick Heidfeld on a three-year contract, who had a year's experience driving for Prost, and then 21-year-old Kimi Raikkonen. This signing caused a stir, as Raikkonen was virtually unknown and had done just 23 races in single-seaters, but had won 13 of them and taken the Formula Renault UK winter title in 1999 and the full Formula Renault UK title in 2000. He was present at the testing shootout between Diniz and Bernaldi and had gone faster than both of them, though this had been kept under wraps by the team. His signing was met with concern and scepticism by many, including FIA President Max Mosley, but nonetheless, he had met the requirements for an FIA super license and soon silenced the critics by scoring on his debut and getting 9 points to Heidfeld's 12 in Sauber's most competitive chassis up until that point, giving the team a record 4th in the Constructors' Championship. Red Bull, however, were not pleased as they had wanted the seat to go to Bernaldi and they sold their 60% stake to Credit Suisse and became a minor sponsor. Raikkonen had impressed enough that he was quickly scooped up by McLaren for 2002 as a replacement for the outgoing Mika Hakkinen, though Heidfeld had also been a candidate as he was backed by Mercedes. And in Raikkonen's place, Sauber signed another rookie in the form of 20-year-old Felipe Massa, who was the incumbent Euro Formula 3000 champion. He failed to impress in the way that Raikkonen had, having several accidents. He was given a 10-place grid penalty for the United States Grand Prix, and so the team sat him out in an effort to circumvent it, and brought back Heinz Harold Frentzen, six years after he'd left them, who was a free agent following the collapse of Arrow's four races earlier. Massa returned for Japan and crashed again, and was then dropped for 2003 and the seat was given to Frentzen full-time. Massa became Ferrari's test driver and Sauber signed 19-year-old Neil Jarni as theirs. Frensen's experience meant he ultimately came out on top over Heidfeld and got a podium at the penultimate round at Indianapolis. Heidfeld's contract expired at the end of the year and he did a driver swap with 30-year-old Giancarlo Fisichella at Jordan and Frensen was not retained and retired from Formula 1 to join Opel in DTM and in his place Massa returned to Sauber. 2004 was a strong year and a year testing for Ferrari had drastically improved Massa's form, though he was still comfortably outperformed by the much more experienced Fisichella. In 2004, Sauber's links with both Ferrari and Red Bull weakened. They went against Ferrari's stance on the planned rule changes for 2005, also signed up for the Grand Prix World Championship, which was threatening to form a breakaway series, and then switched to Michelin tyres for 2005 while Ferrari remained on Bridgestones. Their relationship with Red Bull had been strained since 2001, but in 2004 Red Bull purchased their rivals Jaguar, who would become Red Bull Racing in 2005, ending their relationship with Sauber. As such, Neil Jarni left as test driver as he joined the Red Bull Junior team. Fisichella had joined Sauber with the hopes of it being a springboard to Ferrari, but he instead returned to Enstone and signed for Renault for 2005. Massa stayed on, and a seat was offered to 33-year-old David Coulthard, but he turned it down and instead went to Red Bull. Massa instead was joined for 2005 by 33-year-old 1997 champion Jacques Villeneuve on a two-year contract, who had been on a sabbatical in 2004, save for a brief appearance of Renault. 
Massa drove strongly again and outperformed Villeneuve, who shared a mutual disdain with the team as he did not like the car and the team did not get on board with his very unorthodox setup preferences. In mid-2005, BMW, who had spent the past five years in a close technical partnership with Williams, purchased a majority stake in Sauber, with Peter Sauber retaining a 20% stake. And so the team became BMW Sauber from 2006, with Mario Tyson as their new team principal. They had switched to a German license, but they continued to use the factory in Hinville for chassis design and development. Massa was initially offered a three-year contract with them, but the departure of Rubens Barrichello from Ferrari created a vacancy there, and he accepted their offer instead. Villeneuve stayed on with his two-year contract, though 31-year-old Alexander Wurz and 25-year-old Antonio Pizzonia were both considered as replacements. The team were also interested in 24-year-old Heike Kobelainen, but this was blocked by Renault. Nick Heidfeld took the second seat, who BMW had wanted as he had driven for Williams in 2005. The creation of the third driver role for Friday practice meant they also signed 21-year-old Robert Kubica, the incumbent Formula Renault 3.5 series champion. Villeneuve preferred the new management and enjoyed his time under BMW's leadership. However, BMW were not so impressed with his performances, despite him scoring points four times, and he crashed out in Canada and then again in Germany, sustaining a shoulder injury. At this point, the team decided to bench him and give Kubica an evaluation in his seat. Not wanting to be put in a shootout against a rookie, the former champion decided to quit, giving Kubica his seat full-time. As the new third driver, BMW Sauber chose 19-year-old Sebastian Vettel, who was competing in the Formula 3 Euro Series and was a Red Bull junior and also had backing from BMW, who had given him his first experience of Formula 1 in the Williams FW27 the previous year. By taking part in Friday practice at the Turkish Grand Prix, he became the youngest driver to take part in a Grand Prix weekend, aged 19 years, 53 days. Kubica was disqualified from his first race in Hungary, where Heidfeld finished third, but Kubica then finished third himself at Monza, leaving BMW Sauber fifth in the Constructors' Championship. All three drivers were retained in their respective positions for 2007, and 24-year-old Timo Glock joined as the team's fourth driver, who had raced for Jordan in 2004 and was now competing in the GP2 series. There was a notable uptake in form, with the team establishing themselves as third fastest behind McLaren and Ferrari. In Canada, Kubica was involved in a huge accident which resulted in a sprained ankle and a concussion, so he was told to miss the following round at Indianapolis and Vettel filled in for him, where he scored a point by finishing 8th, before Kubica returned at the next round. Three races later, Scott Speed was fired by Toro Rosso, and Vettel was caught in a tug of war between BMW and Red Bull, until the former eventually relented and released him from his contract, allowing him to join Toro Rosso as second driver, and Glock was promoted to third driver. Only two podiums were scored in 2007, both by Heidfeld, but points were plentiful, and McLaren's exclusion from the Constructors' Championship following the fallout of the Spygate scandal meant BMW Sauber finished runners-up to Ferrari. Heidfeld and Kubica were retained once again for 2008, but Glock, who had just won the GP2 series, signed for Toyota, despite still being under contract at BMW Sauber. They took this to the Contract Recognition Board, who ruled in favour of Glock, so he was free to leave. In his place, BMW Sauber signs 24-year-old Christian Kleon as test and reserve driver, who was a former Red Bull junior, and also 24-year-old GP2 Series driver and incumbent British Formula 3 champion Marco Asma. 2008 was an even stronger year, which culminated in the team getting a 1-2 in Canada and Kubica giving the team their only win so far. At this point, he was now leading the Drivers' Championship, but much to his chagrin, the team decided to abandon development of the car in favour of their 2009 car when the new regulations would come in, and he couldn't hold this lead for long and BMW Sauber eventually drifted to third in the Constructors' Championship. Heidfeld and Kubica were signed on for a fourth consecutive year as teammates for 2009. Kleon was retained as test and reserve driver, but a near-total ban on in-season testing left no room at the inn for asthma, and so he was dropped. BMW Sauber's huge investment in the 2009 car ultimately failed to pay off and they got just two podiums and dropped to sixth in the Constructors' Championship. Mid-season, BMW announced their intention to quit Formula 1 at the end of the year. This left Kubica, Heidfeld and Kleon as free agents, with Kubica quickly signing for Renault. A couple of months later, BMW Sauber secured a buyer in Quad Back Investments Limited, but by this point, the 13th and final slot on the 2010 grid had been given to Lotus Racing. 
The Formula One Teams Association, however, put their full support behind Sauber, and the team were eventually given an unofficial 14th entry, pursuant on another team dropping out or all teams agreeing to have a 28-car grid. In November, Peter Sauber repurchased the team, and a few days later they were granted entry for 2010 following the withdrawal of Toyota, and they went back to using Ferrari engines. As Peter Sauber had not applied for a name change, they would continue to be called BMW Sauber, despite no further connections to BMW. Despite this turmoil, Sauber attended the first ever young driver's test at Abu Dhabi and fielded 18-year-old GP2 Asia Series driver Alexander Rossi on the first day, 18-year-old Formula 3 Euro Series driver Esteban Gutierrez on the second day, and 23-year-old incumbent Formula Renault 3.5 Series champion Bertrand Baguette on the third and final day. Heidfeld and Kleen were both candidates to return as drivers, but Heidfeld became test driver for Mercedes, and instead Sauber signed 23-year-old Komui Kobayashi, who had driven for and been backed by Toyota before their withdrawal, and 38-year-old Pedro De La Rosa, who had spent the past seven seasons as McLaren's test driver. The season started slowly, in a car almost totally devoid of sponsors, but Kobayashi eventually started putting in some very strong performances. De La Rosa, however, failed to impress and finally scored points in Hungary, but was then dropped in place of Heidfeld, who hadn't driven for Mercedes once and had just been signed as Pirelli's test driver, which De La Rosa took. At this time, Gutierrez, now racing in the GP3 series, was also named as their new test and reserve driver. Only a few weeks after Heidfeld returned to Sauber, Kobayashi was re-signed for 2011 and was joined by 20-year-old GP2 Series driver Sergio Perez, bringing generous sponsorship from Telmex, who at the same time joined the Ferrari Driver Academy. Gutierrez was also retained as test and reserve driver, now driving in the GP2 Series himself. The name change back to Sauber was also made official. At the end of season young drivers test at Abu Dhabi, they fielded Gutierrez on the first day and Perez on the second day. Kobayashi and Perez formed a strong lineup that became known for daring overtakes and excellent tyre management. In qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix, Perez crashed at the Nouvelle Chicane in a near identical fashion to Carl Wendlinger 17 years earlier and received a concussion and a sprained thigh. At the following round in Canada, he realised after FP1 that he was not yet fully fit, and so De La Rosa, who had returned to his test driver role at McLaren and just so happened to be at the race that weekend, was hastily drafted in to replace him, even racing in McLaren overalls. At the Hungarian Grand Prix, Kobayashi and Perez were both announced as Sauber's drivers for 2012, and Gutierrez was retained as test and reserve driver. At the end of season young drivers test at Abu Dhabi, Sauber fielded 22-year-old GP2 Series driver Fabio Lima on the first day, and then Gutierrez on the second and third days. Kobayashi and Perez continued to be a dynamic lineup in 2012 and got four podiums between them. Gutierrez also made his Grand Prix weekend debut at the Indian Grand Prix by filling in for an unwell Perez in FP1. In May, Peter Sauber sold a 30% stake in the team to Manisha Kaltenborn, who had been part of Sauber's legal team since 1998 and had become CEO upon Peter Sauber's reacquisition in 2010, and she was now a part owner. In October, Peter Sauber then retired from frontline management and Kaltenborn became Formula 1's first ever female team principal. At the same time, Lewis Hamilton announced he was leaving McLaren for Mercedes for 2013 and Perez then took his seat at McLaren. A month later, 25-year-old Nico Hülkenberg was announced as his replacement, moving over from Force India. Despite his strong performances, Kobayashi was not retained for 2013 and instead Gutierrez was promoted up to a race seat. In his previous role as test and reserve driver, Sauber signed 21-year-old incumbent Formula Renault 3.5 Series champion Robin Freins. At the end of season young driver's test at Abu Dhabi, Freins ran on the first day and Gutierrez on the second and third days. Despite his extensive testing and preparation, Gutierrez failed to impress in 2013, with the only highlights being fastest lap in Spain and a seventh place finish in Japan. Hülkenberg, by contrast, scored nearly 10 times as many points. Despite that, at the end of the year, Hülkenberg returned to Force India for 2014, doing a seat swap with 30-year-old Adrian Sutil, who joined Sauber on a two-year deal, and Gutierrez was retained for a second year. Incumbent GP2 Series champion Fabio Lima attempted to get Gutierrez's seat, and acquired over $14 million in sponsorship, which was half of what Gutierrez had. In July, 17-year-old Formula Renault 3.5 Series driver Sergei Sorokin joined Sauber as a development driver. 
At the end of season Young Drivers Test at Abu Dhabi, Freinz drove on the first day and again on the second day with Hülkenberg, and 24-year-old AutoGP driver Camilla Sato drove on the third and final day. After this, Freinz left Sauber to become Caterham's test driver for 2014, and his place at Sauber was taken by 28-year-old Guido van der Garde, who had raced for Caterham in 2013, and he drove in FP1 in Bahrain, China, Spain, the United Kingdom, Germany, Belgium and Italy, and also drove at in-season tests at Sakia, Barcelona and Silverstone, the former of which also saw Sirotkin. As well as this, 23-year-old IndyCar driver Simona de Silvestro joined the team with the unofficial position of affiliated driver, becoming the first female driver contracted to the team. She twice tested the Sauber C31 at Fiorano, but in October she was suspended after her funding dried up. Sauber did not adjust well to the hybrid era and endured their worst season on record, with not a single point being scored. There was further humiliation as they were beaten to ninth in the Constructors' Championship by Marussia, following Jules Bianchi's ninth place finish at Monaco. At the Japanese Grand Prix, Sutil spun off in heavy rain at the Dunlop curve, and a crane came out to retrieve his car under double-waved yellows. The following lap, Bianchi spun off at the same spot and hit the rear of the crane at 70 mph, the impact of which tore off the roll hoop and caused the crane to drop Sutil's car. Bianchi sustained severe head injuries and quickly lapsed into a coma, dying from his injuries nine months later. At the Russian Grand Prix, Sorokin made his Grand Prix weekend debut, replacing Gutierrez in FP1, and at the United States Grand Prix, Sauber announced that 24-year-old Marcus Ericsson would drive for them in 2015, who had been racing for Caterham in 2014 until their collapse. And then a few days later, 22-year-old Felipe Nazza was announced as their second driver, who had finished third in the GP2 series in 2014 while being Williams' reserve driver. Gutierrez joined Ferrari as test driver, but Sotil was still under contract for 2015 and had to be bought off, and eventually took Nazza's reserve driver spot at Williams. 24-year-old GP3 series driver Adelie Fong took Sotil's seat in FP1 at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, and at the end of season young driver's test at Abu Dhabi, Ericsson ran on both days. After this, 20-year-old GP2 series driver and Ferrari junior Raffaele Marchiello was signed as the team's test and reserve driver for 2015 in place of Sirotkin. In early 2015, Van der Garde revealed that in June 2014, he had signed a race contract with Sauber for 2015, but just before Ericsson and Nasler's signings in November was told that he was no longer required, meaning for a brief period Sauber had four drivers contracted to two seats. He then filed an international arbitration complaint with the Swiss Chambers Arbitration Institution, and two weeks before the season opening Australian Grand Prix, they upheld his complaint and ordered Sauber to honour his original contract. Van der Garde then attempted to enforce this through the Supreme Court of Victoria, and succeeded the following week, obtaining papers allowing him to race that weekend. Sauber, however, appealed this by saying that on safety grounds they would not allow him to drive the car, as he had done neither a seat fit nor any testing. The day before Friday practice, Sauber claimed that van der Garde's contract had been terminated in February with the approval of the Contract Recognition Board, and that he had broken the confidentiality clause of it by discussing this with the media. Due to concerns they may have assets seized for violating court orders, Sauber did not take part in FP1, but then did take part in FP2 following an intervention by Bernie Eccleston who was concerned about negative publicity for Formula 1. Van der Garde relented on Saturday, allowing them to race that weekend, and four days later they reached a settlement by which he agreed to have his contract terminated once and for all, in exchange for 16 million US dollars in compensation. With that settled, Sauber had a bit of a comeback year and managed to score semi-regular points and finish 8th in the Constructors' Championship, and in the summer break Nasa and Ericsson were both renewed for 2016, and Marciello drove in both in-season tests for them and did FP1 outings in Malaysia, Spain, the United Kingdom and the United States. Despite that, he was dropped at the end of the year and also left the Ferrari Driver Academy. At the end of season young driver's test at Abu Dhabi, Adeli Fong, now a Lotus development driver, drove on the first day and Ericsson on the second. Sauber's finances had begun to decline in 2015, which meant they missed pre-season testing in 2016 and reverted back to their 2014 form. In July, Peter Sauber sold his and Manisha Kaltenborn's shares to Swiss-based investment firm Longbow Finance. Peter Sauber therefore walked away from the team for good and retired from motorsport, but Kaltenborn stayed on as CEO and team principal. Even under new management, the team couldn't score any points, 
and after Pascal Wehrlein at Manor scored a point in Austria, they dropped to 11th and last in the Constructors' Championship, foregoing any prize money. At the penultimate round in Brazil, NASA managed to score two points, giving them 10th back and essentially saving the team from total collapse, but instead condemning this to Manor. Ericsson was retained for 2017, and in January NASA did a seat swap with Wehrlein, but shortly after, Manor folded, leaving him without a drive. The fact that it was Ericsson and not NASA that was kept on for 2017 was met with bemusement by many, as he had comfortably outperformed Ericsson in 2015, was effectively the sole reason Sauber was still on the grid, and had begotten an entirely new livery courtesy of his sponsors Banco do Brasil. After leaving the team, he made a variety of allegations against Sauber, and claimed that after Longbow Finance took over control of the team, they started massively favouring Ericsson, as their main investors were all Swedish. Ericsson was being given upgrades first, and they had even tampered with NASA's car's suspension and assigned an inexperienced mechanic to his car that wrongly adjusted the tyre pressures. In the early part of 2016, NASA was adamant that his car was different from Ericsson's. There were some surprisingly large gaps between them in qualifying, and across the year Ericsson won that battle 12-7 and won the race battle 9-4. He did though crash into NASA at Monaco, crashed in FP3 at Silverstone and missed qualifying, and crashed again at Interlagos. After Longbow Finance's takeover, Manisha Kaltenborn started being much colder to NASA, and even after Interlagos said it didn't matter what he'd done, Ericsson was staying for 2017. 2017 started poorly for Sauber as Wehrlein injured himself in a crash at the Race of Champions, which meant he missed pre-season testing and 23-year-old Antonio Giovinazzi was called up to replace him, who had just been named as Ferrari's reserve driver and had also recently finished runner-up in the GP2 series. Wehrlein returned for the season-opening Australian Grand Prix, but withdrew after FP2 as he realised he was still not fit enough so Giovinazzi replaced him again for the rest of the weekend, and then did for the entire Chinese Grand Prix, but crashed in both qualifying and the race. Wehrlein returned from the third round, and Giovinazzi stayed on as reserve driver for Sauber and Ferrari, and also became a test driver for Haas and did seven FP1 outings with them. 23-year-old GP3 series driver Tatiana Calderon also joined the team as a development driver, becoming the second female driver contracted to them. Upon his return, Wehrlein started comfortably outperforming Ericsson and scored the team's only points in Spain and Azerbaijan. On the Thursday before Azerbaijan, Manisha Kaltenborn was unexpectedly sacked as team principal and replaced with Fred Vasseur, who had served as team principal of Renault in 2016. Wehrlein continued to outqualify and outrace Ericsson until he crashed in FP3 at Hungary and after this began complaining about his car's handling being off which created some unexpectedly large qualifying gaps between him and Ericsson. He refused to deny claims that the team had been favouring Ericsson, and the car didn't feel right again until the final two rounds. Despite scoring five points to Ericsson zero, and being a Mercedes junior who had come very close to taking Nico Rosberg's vacant seat in 2017 after he announced his retirement five days after beating Lewis Hamilton in equal machinery, he was still dropped at the end of the year, and Ericsson stayed on. At the mid-season Young Drivers' Test in Hungary, Sauber fielded 21-year-old Formula 2 driver Gustav Malia on the first day and 23-year-old Formula 2 driver Nobuharu Matsushita on the second day. At the end-of-season Pirelli tyre test at Abu Dhabi, Ericsson drove on the first day and 20-year-old incumbent Formula 2 champion and Ferrari junior Charles Leclerc drove on the second, who shortly after was announced as Wehrlein's replacement for 2018. Giovinazzi also stayed on for another year as reserve driver and Calderon was promoted to test driver. In 2018, Sauber were bought out by Islero Investments and entered into a technical and commercial partnership with Alfa Romeo, becoming Alfa Romeo Sauber. They produced a car more akin to their performances in 2015, but Leclerc scored almost four times as many points as Ericsson. Tatiana Calderon also did tests at Fiorano in Mexico City, becoming the first Latin American woman to drive a Formula 1 car. At the Italian Grand Prix, it was announced that Leclerc would be driving for Ferrari in 2019 and would do a seat swap with Kimi Raikkonen, returning to Sauber on a two-year contract, almost 18 years after first joining them. Two rounds later in Russia, it was also announced that Giovinazzi would take the second seat, who had done FP1 outings in Germany, Hungary and at Russia, and Ericsson would be demoted to third driver and brand ambassador, and Calderon would be kept on as test driver. Giovinazzi drove an FP1 again at the final three rounds, and he and Raikkonen both then drove for Sauber at the end-of-season Pirelli tyre test at Abu Dhabi. 
In 2019, Sauber changed their name to Alfa Romeo Racing and became Alfa Romeo on the constructors list. As well as this, in partnership with Cheroots, they also launched the Sauber Junior team, and its inaugural members were 19-year-old Formula 2 driver Juan Manuel Correa from Ecuador, 17-year-old ADAC Formula 4 driver Alessandro Goretti from France, 22-year-old Formula 3 driver Raul Hyman from South Africa, 20-year-old Formula 2 driver Callum Eilot from the United Kingdom, 18-year-old ADAC Formula 4 driver Artur Leclerc from Monaco, 15-year-old ADAC Formula 4 driver Theo Porcher from France, 19-year-old Formula 3 driver Fabio Scherer from Switzerland, 14-year-old ADAC Formula 4 and Italian Formula 4 driver Roman Stanek from the Czech Republic, 17-year-old French Formula 4 driver Stuart White from South Africa, and 19-year-old Formula 3 driver Lirim Zendeli from Germany. Soon after, the Sauber karting team was also launched, and its inaugural members were 15-year-old Joshua Dufek from Switzerland, 12-year-old Christian Ho from Singapore, and 15-year-old Dexter Patterson from the United Kingdom. Raikkonen's experience meant he scored the main bulk of points in 2019, but after the United States Grand Prix, Giovinazzi had his contract extended for another year, and both drivers drove at the end-of-season young drivers test at Abu Dhabi. Callum Eilos had previously been a Red Bull junior and joined the Sauber junior team in tandem with being a member of the Ferrari Driver Academy. He drove for the Sauber junior team by Cheroots in Formula 2, and he drove for Alfa Romeo at the mid-season test at Barcelona, but spun and crashed. He left both the Sauber junior team by Cheroots and the Sauber junior team itself at the end of the year. Juan Manuel Correa was Eilot's teammate in Formula 2 and drove the Sauber C32 at a test at Paul Ricard, but he left the Sauber junior team after his crash at Spa which saw the death of Antoine Hubert and left him with serious injuries, putting his racing career on hold. Lee Rimzindeli, Fabio Scherer and Raul Hyman all drove for the Sauber junior team by Cheroots in Formula 3, but between them scored just 15 points and so were all dropped at the end of the year. Artur Leclerc raced in ADAC Formula 4 and finished third in the standings and was a development driver for the Venturi Formula E team and was then promoted to test and reserve driver mid-season, but left the Sauber junior team at the end of 2019 to join the Ferrari Driver Academy. Roman Stanek made his single-seater debut in 2019 and got wins in both ADAC Formula 4 and Italian Formula 4 and finished fourth in the former and fifth in the latter, but still left at the end of the year. Alessandro Goretti was his teammate in ADAC Formula 4 and finished sixth in the standings and was also dropped. Stuart White finished a disappointing ninth in French Formula 4 and so was dropped, and Joshua Dufek was also dropped from the casting team. Meanwhile, Theo Porcher won the ADAC Formula 4 title. In 2020, Marcus Ericsson left as third driver and brand ambassador and was replaced with Robert Kubica, coming over from Williams and returning after 11 years, whose sponsors all end became title sponsor for Alfa Romeo, and Calderon was kept on once again as test driver and became a brand ambassador. There was a notable drop in performance in 2020, with only 8 points scored, but at the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix, it was announced that Raikkonen and Giovinazzi would both be retained for 2021. Kubica drove for Alfa Romeo in FP1 at the Styrian Hungarian 70th anniversary Bahrain and Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, and at the end of season Young Drivers Test at Abu Dhabi, where he was joined by Callum Eilat. The Sauber Junior team cut all ties with Cheroots in 2020 and became the Sauber Academy, and its new members were 17 year old Formula Renault Eurocup driver Petra Tacek from the Czech Republic and Dexter Patterson, who moved on from the karting team after making his single seater debut in Italian Formula 4. New members to the karting team included 15-year-old Harry Thompson from the United Kingdom, 10-year-old Miguel Costa from Brazil, 11-year-old Piotr Schaier from Poland, 12-year-old Emerson Fittipaldi Jr. from Brazil, 10-year-old Tiziano Monza from Singapore, and 12-year-old Ugyo Uguchukwu from the United States, who won the CIK FIA European Championship title that year. Tacek made a mid-season switch from Race GP to MP Motorsports in Formula Renault Eurocup, but didn't get any wins or podiums and was dropped by Sauber at the end of the year and has not raced since. Patterson was also dropped after getting only 8 points in Italian Formula 4. Thompson, who had joined the Sauber karting team from the Red Bull Junior team, and Shire were both also dropped from the karting team at the end of the year. Raikkonen and Giovinazzi went into their third consecutive season as teammates in 2021. Kubica stayed on as test and reserve driver, Eilot joined as second reserve driver, and Calderon stayed on as development driver. At the Dutch Grand Prix, Raikkonen announced that he had made the decision at the beginning of the year to retire at the end of the season, doing so as the most experienced driver in Formula 1 history. 
The day after the race, 32-year-old Valtteri Bottas was announced as his replacement for 2022 on a multi-year deal, coming over from Mercedes. That weekend, Raikkonen had tested positive for COVID-19, and so was replaced for the race with Kubica, who did so again at the following round at Monza. Before the Qatar Grand Prix, it was announced that Giovinazzi would be demoted to reserve driver for 2022, but would also do so for Ferrari and Haas while racing in Formula E. The following day, 22-year-old Joe Guan Yu was announced as his replacement. Joe had been part of the Ferrari Driver Academy from 2014 to 2018, then joined the Renault Sport Academy, working as a development driver for Renault in 2019 and then getting promoted to test driver in 2020, and then stayed with them when they became Alpine in 2021, becoming only the second Chinese driver to take part in a Grand Prix weekend after Ma Qinghua with HRT in 2012, and in 2022 would become the first ever Chinese driver to start a race. He and Bottas both drove for Alfa Romeo at the end of season young drivers tested Abu Dhabi. As second reserve driver, Eilot drove in FP1 in Portugal and Austria, but left Alfa Romeo at the end of the year to join Junkers Hollinger Racing in IndyCar. Calderon also left Alfa Romeo to join AJ Foyt Racing in IndyCar. Juan Manuel Correa made a return to the Sauber Academy in 2021 after his injuries had healed, but he was demoted down to Formula 3 and scored only 11 points and was dropped again at the end of the year. Emerson Fittipaldi Jr. was promoted to the academy from the karting team after making his single-seater debut in Danish Formula 4 and got two wins and finished third in the standings, but also left the academy at the end of the year. New members of the karting team included 13-year-old Sonny Smith from the United Kingdom, 13-year-old Matze Gwadish from Poland, 13-year-old Gustav Wisniewski from Poland, and 13-year-old Zachary David from the Philippines. Christian Ho, Ugo Ugachukwu, Tiziano Monza, Sonny Smith, Matsie Gwadish and Gustav Wisniewski were all dropped at the end of the year. 2022 started relatively strongly but gradually got weaker, and at the Singapore Grand Prix, Joe's contract was renewed for 2023. At the tail end of the season, it was also announced that from 2026 the team would become an Audi factory team, running Audi power units. Alfa Romeo also announced that they would part ways with Sauber at the end of 2023. A rule came in in 2022 that stated that every team had to field a driver with fewer than two Grand Prix starts and at least two sessions across the year, and so Teo Porcher drove in FP1 at the United States Grand Prix, as Joe's appearance in FP1 at the Bahrain Grand Prix counted as the first. Bottas drove at the season-ending Young Drivers Test at Abu Dhabi and was joined by Porcher. Kubica drove in FP1 at the Spanish, French, Hungarian and Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, but all then leaving Alfa Romeo for Alfa Tauri meant he left the team at the end of the year. Callum Eilert was also recalled to act as reserve driver for the Miami Grand Prix. Giovinazzi also left the team at the end of the year to do a full-time campaign in the World Endurance Championship. The only new addition to the Sauber Academy in 2022 was 18-year-old GB3 driver Roberto Faria from Brazil, who achieved six podiums but was dropped at the end of the year. Zachary David was also dropped from the karting team. For 2023, former McLaren team principal Andrea Seidel was announced as the new CEO in place of Fred Vasseur, who moved on to Ferrari. The position of team principal was abolished and Alessandro Aluni Bravi was appointed team representative. The team also announced a multi-year sponsorship agreement with online casino Stake and a partnership agreement with streaming platform Kick, becoming Alfa Romeo F1 team Stake. At the same time, Audi purchased a minority stake in the Sauber Group in preparation for 2026. Performance dropped back again, and it was a largely anonymous year for both drivers, but at the Singapore Grand Prix it was announced that Bottas and Joe had been renewed for a third consecutive season as teammates in 2024. Porcher drove in FP1 at the Mexico City and Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, and then won the Formula 2 title later that weekend. A few days later, he drove alongside Joe at the end of season young drivers test. New additions to the Sauber Academy for 2023 were 17-year-old Freca driver Marcus Amond from France, 25-year-old F1 Academy driver Lena Buhler from Switzerland, and 13-year-old kart racer Tame Salle from Germany. Going into 2024, Alfa Romeo are now no longer connected to Sauber, and amidst much speculation, their new name has been announced as Stake F1 Team Kick Sauber, or just Stake F1 Team for short, and they will appear as Kick Sauber on the constructors list. However, it has recently come to light that Sauber may lose stake as a sponsor as it is illegal in Switzerland to promote gambling without a Swiss licence, which Sauber do not have. They are already prepared to be known as Kick F1 team in countries where gambling advertising is banned, but this may become more of a long-term option.
Joe's contract expires at the end of 2024, and it is believed that Bottas's expires at the end of 2025. The fact that for in 2026, when the new regulations come in, they should be known as Audi, who will have a similar level of control that BMW did, has led to a lot of speculation over their future drivers. For a while, Ferrari driver Carlos Sainz has been linked to the new Audi project, but the recent announcement that his seat at Ferrari in 2025 is going to be taken by none other than Lewis Hamilton has accelerated rumours that he may take a seat with Sauber one year earlier, most likely from Joe, who was underwhelmed as a driver but provides a considerable amount of funding. On the day that Hamilton's move to Ferrari was announced, Bottas was spotted in Brackley, which suggests he is a candidate to return to his old team. Having won the Formula 2 title in 2023, Teo Porcher, Sauber's most senior junior driver, will be racing in Super Formula in 2024, but will continue to work as Sauber's reserve driver and will no doubt make a few FP1 appearances. He again is a candidate to get a seat in 2025, and many feel he should have got one sooner. Marcus Amund is moving into the Porsche Sprint Challenge Southern Europe series, Lena Bula is returning to Frecker after a year in the F1 Academy, and Tame Sale and Miguel Costa are carrying on in karting. 25-year-old Carrie Schreiner from Germany has joined the Sauber Academy in 2024, where she will race in the F1 Academy, as well as 20-year-old Zane Maloney from Barbados, who was going into his second year in Formula 2, having just left the Red Bull Junior team, where he was a reserve driver for Red Bull, and will now be a reserve driver for Sauber, and will most likely be present at far more races than Paul Chair, as his Super Formula commitments will keep him in Japan for most of the season. The Sauber that gave us Frentzen, Raikkonen, Massa, Kubica, Vettel, Perez and Leclerc seems but a distant memory now, as they have committed themselves to one of the least inspired lineups in their history. But they have talent in their academy, and as their biggest period of success came under BMW's ownership, maybe the same can happen with Audi. That's all for this video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on X, Instagram, TikTok and threads at brook underscore f1. Also join my Discord server and subscribe to my Spotify page and check out the DRS Train podcast, links in the description. A huge shout out and thank you as ever to my Patreon subscribers. Do subscribe to my Patreon if you want early access to audio only versions of each video, as well as a few videos that YouTube won't allow me to put up, and I'll see you all next time.